Okay, the law of sines. So this is going to be when we do not have a right triangle. Right, if our triangle has a 90 degree angle, uh, we've got a lot more tools available. If we don't have a right triangle, right, we don't have a 90 degree angle, uh, Pythagorean theorem and SOHCAHTOA will not work. So we're going to add a couple of tools. This lesson, we're going to add the law of sines. And then the next lesson, we're going to add the law of cosines. Those will be two new tools for our math toolbox. Okay, so for the law of sines, we can set up the law of sines in one of two ways. We'll be using proportions. Now, notice when you see the diagram that we don't have a right triangle, it's still a triangle. I can still label the corners A, B, and C, but C is not a right angle. And I can either set up the proportion where the sine of the angle is in the numerator and the length of the side is in the denominator. Or I can set up the proportion so that the length of the side is in the numerator and the sine of the angle is in the denominator. Right? It's just sides now. There's no legs in hypotenuse because we don't have a right angle. And of course, to solve a proportion, I only really need two ratios. So for example, it's not going to look like, you know, fraction equals fraction equals fraction. Instead, it's just going to be, hey, uh, fraction equals fraction, right? Solve. Or it might look something like this, right? Fraction equals fraction, let's solve, right? Ratio is the fancy name for the fraction. When I get fraction equal to another fraction, the fancy name is proportion, right? So there are four terms in those proportions. If I know three of the terms, I can solve for the fourth one. So let's solve this triangle. It must be in Africa. There goes an ostrich. Okay, um, what should we do first? Hmm. Well, let's take stock of what we know. We know angle A, we know side A, we know side B. I guess angle B is where we gotta go, right? That's the one piece I don't have. Notice I put sine of B in the numerator. Since I need to find angle B, I'm gonna have sine of B in the numerator. I can plug in three of the four values. And now to find the missing value, well, let's multiply both sides by 13. So I know sine of B equals 13 times the ratio of sine of 40 to 16. Grab a calculator, make sure it is in degrees. Sine of 40 degrees times 13 divided by 16. And so I know the sine of B is about 0 0.5222, etc. Oh wait, I want angle B, not the sine of angle B. So if I want angle B, I have to do the inverse sine of that decimal. So the inverse sine of that decimal gets me approximately 31.5 degrees. Notice this time the directions do ask for there's 10th. And so I can add that to my diagram. Okay, now what should I look for? Hey, we got two angles. It's still a triangle. So yeah, I, I can't do the Pythagorean theorem and I can't use Sokotoa, but I can still use the fact that the three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. And I can quite readily figure out, oh, the missing angle is 108.5. Put that in the diagram. Okay, now there's a missing side. Again, it's not a right triangle. Oh great, we're in Ant Antarctica, now the Emperor Penguin. Because it's not a right triangle, I cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. So instead, I'm gonna to have to use the law of sines. And I'm looking for side C, 
So the length of side C will have to be in the numerator. It makes life a little bit easier. Plug in the values that I do know. Hmm. How do I isolate the variable C? Well, let's multiply both sides by the sign of 108.5. Again, time to grab that calculator. I want to do the sine of 108.5. Take that answer, multiply it by 16. Take that answer, divide it by the sine of 40. I come up with a number pretty close to 23.6 when I round off the nearest tenth. And that is the third side. Now, think back to when you were taking our good uh, friend geometry and we were looking at our yummy yummy proofs All right what kind of proof could have been used with this triangle well side side angle right i know a side 16 i know a side 13 and i know the angle is 40 degrees now the law of sines will also work with angle angle side and angle side angle because remember if you know two angles you actually know all three angles and so the inverse sine function is not needed on those two right angle angle side angle side angle i won't need to use inverse sine because i can just add to get the third angle oh we're now in australia because there goes an emu Okay, so uh, what should we find first? Hey, we know two angles. All right, this is an angle side angle. If we know two angles, we really know all three angles, don't we? All right, let's add them up. Figure out that the missing side has to, I'm sorry, missing angle has to be 29 degrees. Now I can set up a proportion for side B, and I can set up a proportion for side C. I want those in the numerators because that's what I'm looking for. So those are two different proportions, right? The one toward the left, I'll use to find side B. The one toward the right, I'll use to find side C. All right, so in each case, I can plug in the values I do know. And yeah, we're going to need more room. I have to admit it here. And so if I've got sine of B on the denominator, I'm like, hey, I don't want sine of B. I'm sorry, sine of 70 in the denominator. Start all over. Okay, to isolate the variable B, I don't want sine of 70 degrees in the denominator. So let's multiply both sides by the sine of 70 degrees. Again, I've got to play with the calculator. And if I push the buttons in the correct order, I come up with about 19.4 when we round off to the nearest tenth. Add it to the diagram. Now to solve for side C, I do not want sine of 81 degrees in the denominator. So let's multiply both sides by the sine of 81 degrees. Now C is isolated, grab a calculator, push buttons in the correct order, and say, aha, if I'm going to round the nearest tenth, I better come up with 20.4. And there we have another solved triangle. All right, now I also kind of like this type of question better. I like it when you're just given a little bit of information. So, hey, here are the three pieces you know, go for it. And you're like, oh, wow. So what do you do? Well, you draw a triangle. All right. Key thing in math is draw yourself a picture. Now, it's not going to be a right triangle, right? Just going to be a triangle. So I just, I don't know, three sides. And then I'll slap down my A, B, and C. All right. Any of the angles could be A. Any of them could be B. Any of them could be C. But after I place my A, B, and C, I then have to be careful about where I place the numbers, right? The 30 degrees must go with angle A. The 66 degrees 
must go with angle B. And then if the side length is seven for side A, that has to be all the way across from angle A. Okay, and again, if I know two angles, I actually know all three angles because it's a triangle, it's got to add up to 180 degrees. I can quickly figure out the value of the missing angle, 84 degrees, add it to my triangle. Um, I do not know side B, so there'll be the numerator of one of my fractions. I do not know uh, the length of side C, so that'll be the top of the other one. I know three of the four values, so I can plug them in, pop, 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 and I got two different proportions to solve. The one on the left I can solve and come up with the value of B. If I push buttons in the correct order on the calculator, I should come up with 12.8. Now, because there's a chance that I push the wrong button, that's why I really need to see that step-by-step -step work, because if 12.8 uh, is not the correct answer, but I can see the step-by-step -step work, I still know that, hey, I've done it correctly, right? I did all the steps correctly. I must have pushed the wrong button to get a weird answer. In this case, though, rest assured, 12.8 is the correct response. And then on the other one, let's solve for the length of side C. Again, if I can push the buttons in the correct order, I should come up with about 13.9. So if you need to practice using a calculator, um, just make sure you can do this one. I'll say, hey, uh, can I do sine of 84 times 7 divided by sine of 30 and get 13.9, right? Test yourself. Or try, hey, sine of 66 degrees times 7 divided by sine of 30 degrees. Make sure you can really get 12.8 on your calculator. Right, for the law of sines to work, I have to have something paired up, right? I have to have an angle and the side that goes with that angle, right? The angle on its corresponding side. In this case, it was angle A and side A, right? If I cannot pair something up like that, the law of sines won't work. Okay. Uh, the picture, again, we're not going for artistic perfection. Uh, you might notice that the picture looks kind of weird. You say, hey, uh, shouldn't 84 degrees, shouldn't that angle look bigger than the one that has 66 degrees? Or, hey, uh, you know, the side that's labeled 13.9, shouldn't that look larger than the side that's labeled 12.8? Your picture does not have to be artistic. It does not have to be mathematically correct. It's not going to be drawn to scale. It's not going to be in the correct proportion, right? Don't worry if that side that says 13.9 doesn't look like it's much longer than the side that's labeled 7, right? You say, hey, shouldn't 13.9 be like twice as long as 7? Don't worry about it, right? It's not going to look correct. Don't worry about it as long as it's a triangle and as long as you can label A, B, and C and then put the numbers in the correct locations, it's going to be just and so our final bird of the day, um, that doesn't look like a real flamingo. It looks like a plastic yard ornament that probably escaped from my garden. Get back in the garden there, pink flamingo. Go away. Oh, here they come. Here come the real flamingos. Do, do, do. We've got a bunch of them just kind of waiting there in the water, looking cute. So it's probably time to get to work.